Welcome to First Down Sports. As always, I'm your host, Ray Dunn. Sitting with me again this week down at the far end of the table, the one that follows instructions like nobody else, my brother, Chris Dunn. How's it going, eh? Sitting in the middle, the one and only, Jeff Wood. Baba Booey. Wrong <laughs> show. If you're on a golf course, we got to take you out. <laughs> Our producer is again, once as always, got Jason DeRoche. DeRoche. Okay, I, I knew it there. No, you got it right. You got it right. DeRoche. Okay, DeRoche. <laughs> Our video production guy, we've got Curtis the Cutman Strickland. Cuts like a knife. Cuts, Cuts like, like a, a knife. knife. As always, we're recording live from the Fox and the Hound here in Riverview, New Brunswick. Want to thank again our sponsors, Fox, as well as Moose Light. Make sure you get yourself a Moose Light when you come down here to the Fox. Oh, we got a new sponsor, Fox? Uh, we, we're sponsored by Fox. We made it. We're here. We, 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 we do have a new sponsor to talk about, though, boys. As you can see, we've got these sharp new shirts on. Uh-oh. Except for my brother, Chris. <laughs> Take off, eh? Last uh, week I was called by uh, a good buddy of mine, faithful listener to the show, Brett Doyle from Doyle's Corporate Image. Doyle rules. Brett and Darcy took after our, or looked after us as far as providing us with shirts. And uh, we'll talk a little bit uh, more about uh, Doyle corporate image later on in the show. So thanks again to Darcy and Brett. Thanks. Beauty shirts. Beauty. <laughs> Before we get uh, going into the show, I want to send a little congrats out to our Super Bowl package winners from the weekend. We had Jim Slattery. Jimmy. And a boy, Jim. And Jason Richard on Jason Super Bowl Richard. Sunday. Jason. Chris and I went to see him unannounced. We kind of tricked him into sitting home waiting for us to get there, and he was quite surprised when we got there. Thanks, Jess and Manitel. He helped us with that one. Yeah. A little, uh, little trickery. Yeah, but it worked out, and he was very happy. He was excited. Very. Yeah. All right, so as always, we're going to talk about a little uh, uh, history review for okay. February the 6th. Okay? We're going to go back in time a little bit on some of these subjects. 1952, February 6th. This was a big date. Wow. Queen that. Elizabeth II succeeded King George VI to the British throne. Throne. Quick fact. Not bad, eh? Quick fact. She's still sitting there. Wow. Good run. It's like the Patriots. She's had a really good run. It's like the Bats. They wow. keep on winning. Yeah. Yep. She just keeps staying there. Here's a good one. 1958, Ted Williams signed a contract with the Boston Red Sox to become the highest paid player. Eddie Williams. Want to take a shot at what his salary was in 1958 to be the highest paid player? I, was gonna ask, I did look at the Alamac before on this, and I think I made, was it uh, 100, 180000 No. Too high. Too high. His salary was 135000 That's not too bad. That's not too bad. Wow. 135000 He was the highest paid then. player. Yeah. Big money back then. I, think they I thought he got paid in bacon. <laughs> bacon. Bacon. He was a huge fan of bacon. <laughs> I'm pretty I sure, see. if you want to check this out, I'm pretty sure that they have him uh, frozen. I think uh, the, the body's frozen. Cry, cryogenically frozen. I'm going to check on Is that. Is that right? I'm almost positive. I remember hearing something about that. I think that's Walt Disney. That's him too, but Ted Williams too, apparently. Just to give you guys an idea, in 2013, the minimum salary in the uh, major league was 500000 and they get a raise every year for the cost of living. So that's a big difference from uh, 1958. That's right. Here's a big one. 1967. Muhammad Ali TKO's Ernie Terrell in 15 rounds to become the heavyweight champion of the world. 15 rounds. We watched wow. that. I think we had a we had a men's night. We, I think we watched that, didn't we? Uh, we had a we had a big screen. Live, you mean? Live, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> A brawl broke out. Here's here's a great stat for our good buddy Jeff Wood. On February the sixth, two thousand eleven, Super Bowl forty five, Green Bay Packers Woo. beat the Pittsburgh Steelers thirty one to twenty five in the Super Bowl. Nice. Good 
like a long time ago. It was a long time ago. Does it? It's only six years ago. I know, but too long. Been who, too long. Who was the MVP AJ? of that game? Too long. There's been too many painful memories between there and MVP. Yeah. Rogers was Rogers. the MVP. Yeah. yeah. No question. Aaron Rodgers got it. Aaron Rodgers. That's it. All right. That's uh, our date review. Nice. Okay, now we're going to move on. To, let's get right into the uh, big topic of last night or the weekend sports. All right, right. the wow. most important topic of the weekend. Hold on. So that's why I brought this. You know, football is over. Right to hockey. Yeah, past one. Let's move on. Let's go to the next that, sport. That wasn't the topic I was going to talk about. Oh, okay, I just wanted to make sure. I'm really sensitive. Like, hockey's the time. You know, football is great. Well, let's move on to hockey. Hockey the, now. The Edmonton Oilers. I get it. Pittsburgh wins. Let's, I mean, the Pats wins. Let's move on, right? No. Okay. Edmonton beat my trial. He's a Buffalo fan. So <laughs> let's move on. It's already the 2017 season already. Do we have to talk okay. about this event? If there's oh, one guy, if there's one guy that loves this news from last night, it's Mike Fougier. Our poor guest from the week before, Justin uh, Robichaud, is not feeling that great tonight. Tough one. Way to go, Justin. Way to go, Fouj. Two words, Tom Brady. New England came back. In a game that was a complete blowout, they won 34 to 28. Just to throw a couple of points out to you, I can't believe this stat. Brady goes 43 for 62, 466 yards, two touchdowns, and a uh, interception. Ryan throws for 284 yards, two touchdowns, but he only had to throw 17. He only threw 23 passes and completed 17 of them. Crazy. Just look at how many times Brady threw. Four times as many passes as Ryan. You know, and it all came at the, uh, I think, the little bit of the third and the, mostly in the fourth. 200 yeah. and something yards. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Now, crazy. I'm sure we're going to get into a little bit of stats as we go here. But here's the main stats I want you to know. So, for Brady, he's now five for seven as far as winning Super Bowls. It's incredible. Unbelievable. He's had four MVPs, another record. It's the greatest comeback of all time in sports, period. Right. Ten points. It was the first Super Bowl with overtime, and of course he's now the first winner of a Super Bowl in overtime. I mean, if there's a record to break, Brady's going to find a way to I break it. I get it. I get it. He's good. I think it was before <laughs> last night. Ten points was the biggest deficit. He, they came back 25. Wild. So I am now going to go on record. I did on Facebook last night. But I will now go on record and tell all you Patriots fans out there, Brady is officially the GOAT, the greatest player of all time. I believe you can hear Rex Ryan's wow. heart breaking right now. Yeah. <laughs> My own heart. Was that really hard? To, was that tough to say? That's tough to say. It took a while. It's tough to say. The only thing is uh, one of the, the celebrities there uh, made a good point. It's a different era. We're talking about... You know, well, it so is different areas. It's, 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 I agree with that. The wide receivers back in the 80s, 70s, they didn't have the release off the line of scrimmage like the wide receivers do now. It's just a different time. Yeah. Different now, time. I different think Tom time. Brady is amazing. I, I, I gave a, a big apology. I gave a big apology. To, to, like, I gave Brady in New England a big, big... I was on Facebook all night making pictures and poking at him. Making fun and oh, it was the best time. It was the best. And then when they came the around, forth. I think Paul Chamberlain, one of my buddies, gives me a thing. Is I hope that packs come back just so so it, it's going to make me look bad. I, I looked bad last night. Yeah, well, I apologize. I'm sorry. That's why I and stayed I off. I stayed off Facebook last night. I didn't even want to get on it. So let's get into the game. First quarter was kind of a just field position kind of quarter. There was nothing big going on in the first quarter. Moving the ball back and forth. The special teams were excellent. They kept pitting the other team back. Um, so there wasn't a whole lot going on in the first quarter. All of a sudden, to start off the second quarter, Blount gets stripped of the ball. And that's where the Falcons uh, got on a little bit of a run. Made it down the field. Big catch by Jones in the middle of the field. Did you see him wrestle that ball away uh, Crazy. from the defender? Like Crazy. Crazy. drop, yeah. Strong. And then Freeman makes a big cut and scores a touchdown for uh, a 7 nothing lead. That's how the game got started. Yep. That's what they needed. It was a big game. Um, and then 
Shortly after that, on the next drive, Maddie made a huge pass to Hooper in the end zone against Patrick Chung. Big time. Tough throw, too. Big catch. Big, oh, catch, big yeah. catch, about just, 14 up. Just as, just as they missed him in the corner. They went right back to him. Right back to him. It was great. Yeah, he's a big body. Yeah. And just so you know, when they were down 14 nothing, there was a stat set on television. I don't know if you guys got this. But it was officially the largest deficit that Brady and Belichick together had ever faced in a Super Bowl. 14 nothing. Okay. Never say never. Yeah. New England finally got some momentum. Started uh, bringing the ball back downfield. Yeah. Now there was three whole defensive holding calls that helped that drive, if you remember. Still, still was irrelevant in the end, though. Yeah. You, got, you guys have gone through that a little bit with, as Buffalo fans. Eh? Oh, yeah, All absolutely. All those calls. And, yeah. And then... Uh, as Brady was getting down, he was around the 30-yard line, and that's when uh, Alfred, number 23, broke on the ball, intercepted the ball, and took it to the house. 21 nothing. See, it was irrelevant. All those, those, those holding calls, they were just getting ready to bounce yeah. Did you see the uh, Alfred interview after the game? No. They said that they watched film, and that was a play that Pat's run a lot, and he was ready for it. As yep. soon as he saw Brady looking was it at Edelman, Boom. Yep. he just jumped around, and he knew it was coming. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. It was crazy. I mean, twenty. It was twenty-one nothing at that point. Huh? Wow. You know, like <laughs> there. It was funny during this game, and I don't know if you guys noticed it, but there was at least four or five times during this game I was thinking, "Game's over." Yeah, yeah. They they uh, they got the cert they wanted, but I guarantee you, those guys on that bench and in that room didn't think the game was over when they were up twenty-one nothing. Twenty-one right? is still is still come back. One touchdown. Yeah. You can come back again. 21 doesn't do it to a game, a game against Brown Brady. When I went 28, now I was thinking, is this the nail in the coffin? Yeah. Now we're getting there. Well, then New England made one last drive near the end of the second half. And both offensive coordinators, I made this comment on Facebook last night, both offensive coordinators made terrible offensive play calls in the game last night. And on this, on this final drive by the Patriots, and I was actually chatting with Mike Fougier. I said to him, the Patriots have got to score here. They need a touchdown heading into the half. And they made a play call. They did a tight end screen, which got them two yards on third down. It was a terrible yeah, play call. They needed like was. 12 yards. Yeah, yeah fancy. Right? And um, anyways, Patriots ended up settling for a field goal there. Yeah. And that's how the first half came to an end. Yeah. Right. Momentum was still in Atlanta's favor. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, going into the, the dress room, Atlanta still had some most of the momentum holding them to, to holding the Pats to a field goal at halftime. That's that's exactly the same. Once, once they once they stopped them, uh, this is it. Like that's the game breaker right there. They're able to stop them, hold them to a, a field goal. And you saw it in New England. You saw it in Bilicek. You saw it in Brady. We're now there was a sign of defeat of like, yeah. oh boy, that that's a tough one to take. Yeah, they. Right? they they did not, well, it was funny. I saw Patriots fans on Facebook because I was checking in at that point. Plus, Fougier had texted me saying, the Patriots, this is the worst performance they've had in like 10 years. And yeah. they've saved it for the Super Bowl. Yeah. And I don't know if you guys remember last week I said that they've been so good. They've only thrown two interceptions all year. If there's a time for that to change, this is the game for it to change. Right. And in the first half of that game, I think it did. Yeah. yeah. Right? It definitely did. Yeah, in a game like yesterday against Atlanta, they met they met their matchup and I think Gronkowski was missed for sure. Oh, for big, sure. That was a big um, miss. You know, you could tell in the first half for sure they were they were put back on their heels. I don't think uh, I think I don't want to say they weren't ready for Atlanta to, to come out that way, but um, I think they might have uh, shocked them a little bit to how well Atlanta was containing them. That's right. They weren't moving the ball much at all. Well, they're, 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 the linebackers, they kept staying all night how fast they were. You saw it. The speed. Well, the front, yeah, the front speed seven. Was, the oh. trade was crazy. Yeah, they were getting that Brady. Yeah. That's that, what you got to do. That one sack by the, I forget the player's name for Atlanta. He literally, literally, you know, went out wide all the way around and then came back at Brady. He, he must have run about 20 yards there to get at Brady, you know, with the, the distance he had gone. That's right. It was a funny game, too, because at the end, it's like, I think Belichick was saying, something like 90 plays. Yeah. The count of possession was in the Pats' favor, um, but they weren't getting anything going. They, they couldn't have time. Yeah. So then we get into halftime. 
Now, before we get into the third quarter, Jeff had some homework. Jeff being the newbie, he got some really important homework for the halftime show. So Jeff, why don't you give us an update what took place in the halftime show? Yeah, thanks for that, Ray. I paid close attention. I had the notebook out come halftime. Normally, I'm having a beer or chicken wings, but I had to have the notepad. Lady Gaga, great performance. <laughs> two different outfits. Okay. She had two. But she did put a, uh, a shawl on over her, her first outfit. Okay. Um, I think she, you know, she, she entertained all audiences, yeah. all ages. Yeah. I think everyone enjoyed the, uh, the halftime show. I saw an interview with, with Lady Gaga uh, running up to the Super Bowl, and you know what, she is, uh, she's like Brady. She's a true professional on her craft. She oh, yeah. was ready to go, and it was one of the best halftimes I, I thought of the Super Bowl in the last few years, for sure. Guys, I didn't see very many uh, negative comments on, uh, on social media. There was a few, Chris Hobson. Didn't like it. For some reason, I thought she was great. Yeah, yeah, I thought she was great. On a scale of one to ten, what do you give her, Jeff? I say ten. Ten? Nice. I say well, ten. Yeah. I, I say ten. No. I'm not giving a ten. You don't like giving ten, do you? I'm you're giving tough. a nine. You're I'm giving a nine. You don't listen to your tough, but please not. <laughs> Still pretty good, though. Pretty good, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty good. All right, so let's get into third quarter. Atlanta gets the ball first. And I've got a little segment coming on a little bit later here tonight. I want to talk about the whole coin toss thing. But Atlanta gets the ball to start the third quarter. They come out and they go 3-0. and When he took the ball at the start of the third quarter, I don't know if you guys heard the stat, it had been over an hour since their last possession on offense. Yeah. Because Brady controlled the ball so much at the end of the second half and then the halftime show. That's right. It was over an hour. Yeah. And then they come out and they go 3-0. and And you could tell when the Patriots got the ball, they were fired up. Like Brady was... This is their chance. What, whatever yep. that, that soft demeanor that Brady had, that he didn't have that, that killer instinct in the first half. All of a sudden, I could see a little bit of a change in Brady where he had that, you know, that... Sense that, of urgency. That sense of urgency, that, that touch. That anger that, yeah. in his yep. eyes again. You yep. know how he does that? Now... Even though they came out a little bit more fired up, guys were still dropping balls. And I don't know if you saw this one, but Edelman was wide open on a oh, pass, yeah, yeah. cutting across right the middle. The middle. Field, yeah, that's right. And Brady missed him. That's right. Like, no, no, he hit him. He's dropped. No, the play I'm talking about, Brady. I mean, yeah. Through, Brady threw oh, yeah, way yeah, yeah. over. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess it that. was a pass. You don't see Brady miss those throws. Yeah, yeah. 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 Brady makes those throws every him, time. Defense yeah. had him confused a little bit, no question. Yeah. Yeah. The front seven for Atlanta was unbelievable. That's right. They yeah, really, really were. They stepped up. Yeah, they played well. Ryan ends up getting the ball back. Right? It's still 21-3. Ryan gets the ball back. He makes a great throw to Gabriel across the middle for about 40 yards. And what a catch by this kid knowing he's going to take a whack when he, you know, because he's between the hash marks when he catches that. Yeah, yeah. You know you're going to get drilled from the safety. Stepped right in front of it, yeah. And uh, Coleman ended up scoring again. Now it's 28-3, to and I say to myself, game's over, right? Yeah. I think at that point we all did, yeah. I, I, uh, I, I put it right on. on never say never, That's but it. I think 28-3, I, I agree. 24-3, you might have thought they could still 28-3. You, you kind of thought Atlanta was starting to think they're going to put up 36, 40 points like they did all year. Like they did all year. Well, if you look at odds, like the odds, the odds of scoring that much, there's so many things that had to go right for them to come back. Like there's so many things, and Atlanta was on. Well, Atlanta was playing well. How could how can he, all of these things come together? Yeah. It did. Yeah, yeah, they made it happen. After that score, New England gets the ball and they're driving back downfield again. Around Atlanta's 40-yard line, Brady scrambles out to the right, and then he takes off downfield, Running. and he runs for 15 yards and slides. <laughs> now, my biggest question, all right, now, if I'm an Atlanta defender, okay, we're in the Super Bowl. I'm here to win the Super Bowl. Of course. Brady slides. How important is 15 yards? Like, would you take a shot at him? Because I, all I'm thinking is, no. as this guy slides no, on the ground, you don't need to. are you taking a shot no, at No, you don't do that. They, look at they've had a fair, a fair amount of success stopping New England all night, and they have such a buffer. Why do that? Now maybe one of your guys thrown out. No, it's a dumb move. Shouldn't even brought it up. If you watch the, if you watch the tape again, 
They didn't go at Brady. Brady ran and he sat back like he was a running quarterback. Yeah. They didn't really go. They could have jumped up and saved five yards and just drilled him. I I I think I I think you've got to put a hit on Brady there. You've got to get you've got to get your shot I I, yeah. I think he was taking a shot. Was, look at that upshot that you talked about. Upshot was all over him. Upshot was on him. Easily I think you got to watch. You don't want you don't want uh, you don't want the flag coming out, and then all of a sudden you get better field position yeah. with Brady. There was probably a lot of talk about the, that in the, in the in the film room before. You know, make sure you're not taking dumb penalties. Kind of a page out of Belichick's book, but I see what you're saying. Maybe put him back in the seals a little. If you can slide something in there. Yeah. Um. Well, how much is that? A, t- a ten or fifteen yard penalty? Yeah, you don't take that. Throw the flag. Fifteen yard penalty. No, you don't do that. No. Now, there That's a tough there, one. There, there might have been a fine from the NFL oh, afterwards, but yeah. what's a twenty thousand dollar fine if, if, when he went to Super Bowl? If you're gonna do that, you want to do you want to do yeah. that when you're like they had a lot of shots to hit him after. They don't you don't see the camera of how many times. He was actually hit all game. Yeah, they were lining him up. Like he, he took a lot of hits. That guy could take hits yeah. at his age. Yeah, yeah. I kept oh, thinking, yeah. there's no way when he got up from the one that you talked about, an upshot, threw the lineman into him, and then jumped on top of him. I thought, That's the one, or the one that he's in the end zone, and he had to throw awkward. And uh, I, I forget the guy hit him. It could have been upshot again. Upshot came in and knocked him, and he fell awkward. And it's like, oh. There's a little just crack in the army, but he just gets up and yep. keeps going. Yep. It's that special juice he has on the side. I don't know what it is, because you're not that much older than Brady. You would have been limping off the field after the first hit. <laughs> at 206 he's been waiting, third, he's been waiting after I At, at 206 <laughs> in the third quarter, Brady finally scores his first touchdown to White, and then Gonkowski comes up and misses the extra point. Awesome. So he gives up momentum again. Boom. Boom. Yeah. All the odds keep going. All the odds keep right. going in a land of favor. All these odds keep going. Then, right? then, then New England kicks the onside kick. Atlanta recovers. Well, not only had Goskowski kick, or touched the ball before it even went 10 yards, so Atlanta's getting the ball regardless. So now they're, they've got the ball on, on New England's 40-yard line, <laughs> yep. up 21-9. to 28-9. 28-9. 28-9. to 9 Game's over, right? Like, again, Wait, game's over. They're going to score for sure. Like just from a mathematical yep. perspective, and the TSA turning point half. From from a mathematical perspective, right. the game's over. That's the start of it. This is I when think, the TSA yeah. turning point happens. Are you talking? Are you going into the fumble? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, well, before we even get there, Brady has the ball on the twenty yard line because now he's got the ball back. He's he's uh, he gets the ball on his own twenty yard line. Uh, this is to start the fourth quarter. Right. Okay. Now, something kind of weird happened at the end of the third quarter. I'm not going to talk about it now, but Brady gets the ball. There's 14.51 left to go in the fourth quarter now. And uh, he's about to start the biggest comeback of all time. And he throws another pass to Edelman, missing him. Yeah, that's what I think I was talking about. Yeah, right that's the yeah. one where you missed. And Edelman, which is crazy. Just think about these stats. He's had 10 targets and only three catches. Yeah, yeah. Okay. They were on him like they were yeah. on him like loose. Even the ones he catches at the end. Jarrett sacks Brady twice, hard, forces him down to the ground, forcing a fourth down, which New England converted, and then made it downfield for a field goal. Now it's a six-minute point game. Yeah. Okay. At eight twenty-four in the fourth quarter, this is the play you're talking about. This is the TSN turning point, if you will. Actually, the start, the start of why, why are we promoting TSN? It was the first down sports turning point. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. First down That's sports turning That's what it's called, point. TSN turning point. It was. The game officially changed. Matt Ryan was sacked and fumbled the ball, giving Atlanta its first turnover of the postseason. And you know, up until that point, Atlanta was doing well of limiting their mistakes. You know what? If they, if, even if they were shut down, they would put them in the field position. They would kick it out. New England had to had to start back. They were doing a good job of keeping uh, the special teams, you know, having them start like maybe on the 30, 35. It was a lot more a lot more field they had to work with, right? Yeah. And they had a buffer a point. So, but when they did that, that was it. That's when the, that's when Brady was able to march down, put seven points up, actually eight with a with a two point conversion. That's when they started doing the math and the game plan plan changed. Yeah. And, and I think with the experience with the Patriots, when that fumble happened, I think the sense of urgency on the sideline was we got to take advantage of this turnover that's right, right now. Right now, that's right. Score now. 
put these guys in their heels and then see what we can do to finish the game. That's exactly what they do. I mean, they, they could have maybe, you know, kicked another field goal, which they probably wouldn't have tried. They would have tried for a touchdown. But yeah. they did what champions do. They got the ball back on the, what, 40 or 45, and they yeah. drive down and boom, and then they convert. Another, yeah. Crazy. Crazy. Brady, Brady, Total change of momentum. Brady to Amendola for a touchdown, then they score the two points afterwards. Now it's 28-20 with five minutes and 56 seconds left. Atlanta's getting the ball. Yeah. So after that touchdown, you talk about how important special teams is in a game. Special teams, very important. Goskowski, I don't know if you guys noticed this, he made one of the best kickoffs that you can make. He put it right down on the two oh, or yeah, one yeah. yard line, kept him short of the end zone, so we had to return it. Yep. They tackled him around the nine yard line. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Now Ryan's starting at the nine yard line. And I'm thinking, this game's over. They can't move the ball anymore. It, you know, New England's playing on fire. That's right. And then he hits that pass to Freeman for 39 yards. Looks like wide open. Him. Wide open. Down the middle. Oh, the flats. The play yeah. after that is what I thought was the catch to end the Super Bowl. I thought so too. Once that happened, yeah, he, he it should have been. Well, should have been. I'm talking after the Freeman one. He made that pass to Julio Jones on the sideline. Through a defender's hands, Julio just gets his feet touched down. They're at the 20-yard line. I'm thinking this game is over. I thought that throw, phenomenal catch. Oh, yeah. But when you look back at the replay, uh, I think it's a little bit of a panic throw by, by Matty Ice where he put that. I mean, yeah, the defender was all over him. I mean, the ball gets in there. Julio does what he does. His strength taps his toes, gets in. But if you look at the replay... There was a smart throw. No, it, yeah, it wasn't. A, it wasn't a smart throw, and I think he'd say the same. It, it wasn't a smart throw, but sometimes you know they use that expression. You got to trust your receiver. That's right. Well, he there put the is. ball up there, and he expected Julio to grab it, and he does. Yeah, I think it's he debatable. Those you know, after I reviewed both, as I said on Facebook, that said that uh, Elsman, the way that he caught it, with the concentration. I know we're going to get to it, but I was like, oh, Julio, you can't, you can't. Yeah. Make that type of like really the concentration True. first is there. Yeah, you're right. Then he's stretched out, and then he has to get the conscious of keeping the feet in. I think it goes to him on that pass. Now, I think I, rever I think I reverse. It. I think Julio's was the best catch that I've seen today. All three components, yeah. right over the defender's hands. Well, it was catch. Yeah. Then he had to twist his body oh, to, get his, to get his get oh, his feet out. Unbelievable. And then and then drop his feet in. Crazy. Secure it to the ground too, because he didn't have yeah, the right awesome. security at the very first. You wonder why he's got turf to him, and he slams those toes down there on the yeah. side of the sidelines. Eh? <laughs> so now we get into the biggest debacle of the Super Bowl. They've got the ball at the twenty for the first time. Freeman runs the ball, and he loses a yard. He hadn't lost a yard all game. Right. New England's defense Stop. stops him one yard. The next play, it's second and eleven. And again, there's less than five minutes to go in the game. He drops back to throw the ball. There is no reason for this play whatsoever. Not only that, but I'm gonna, again, I'm going to talk about this a little bit later. When he dropped back to throw the ball, when he dropped back to throw the ball, what are you doing? Oh, you got music going on. When you drop back to throw the ball, he snapped the ball with about 13 seconds still on the play clock. Did you see that? The clock is running. Yeah. You got to run that clock down to one second when you're trying to kill the time up. 100 percent. Yeah. Right. 100 percent. That's where New England is so good. Oh. They're so well coached, so well prepared. Yeah. You get in that situation, the game is almost over. Yeah. Really. We know what's going to happen as we're going to get to it, but at that point when you're up, one score. So the game's not over. No. You kick a field goal or get a touchdown, you're really stretching with New England, make them the force timeouts. Yeah. I don't know how you snap the ball with 13 you're, seconds. You're, I really you're, don't. You're up eight points. You should be playing for a field goal there. 100%. Because now, now, once you kick the field goal, you're putting the pressure on New England to score two touchdowns right. with less than five minutes left to go in the game. Yep. And right. you force New England maybe to use their timeouts. Uh, who knows? You run the ball, you might have got a first down, you might have got a touchdown. But right. Yep. And it was only second down. Yeah. yeah. It was only second down. So instead he gets sacked. 
Then they next play, they get called for holding. Oh, yep. Now they're out of field goal range. Third and 33. They, okay. they throw the ball incomplete on third down. Now they're punting the ball to Brady. And I'm thinking to myself, uh -oh. Brady's got the field to go, and he's got three minutes three, and yep. 30 seconds on the game time. Tons of time. And I'm thinking... This Stop. game's going to overtime. This is automatic. This game's it's going like, to overtime. Yeah, you don't give Brady the ball. three minutes no. the ball no, no. with two timeouts. That's how I thought. This is automatic. It's just a matter of time. That's where I'd say the coaching staff, the management thought, you know what, if we can turn back the clock on that last couple of plays that we ran, um, you know, I'm sure they're looking at it in the film room today thinking, you know, we, we probably would have done it differently, but um, he's the last guy you want in the league to... Uh, we're gonna have, you know, I know we're probably gonna get to one, but I, I really think that the opportunity there, when they marched down, you know, they kept carving, 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 then they got down and they stopped on a sh on a short yardage. They had a chance to this. They they stopped them and then they ran it in and they cut down more of the box, leaving uh, Ryan with 51 seconds. I think they should like. I think in reverse, if New England had that same thing, I think they would have said, let them in. I think there would have been a, a minute, minute 30, minute 40. That would have been left on that clock when they when they first stopped that guy. That's like, and if that would have happened, Ryan would have had I think still a, well, maybe the time most would have gone, but it's still a minute forty to go down for a field goal. Yeah, yeah. You know? you, you, but they stopped them and they didn't use this, the clock man, the, the clock manager just let them in. They were going to score. Yeah. You know. Yeah. They saw the momentum. Let them in. And let's just now let's take Brady out of the game. And let's move it down and let's put it in the kicker's hands. Well, the, the, the biggest thing is when Brady gets that ball back on his own nine-yard line, okay, there's three minutes left, Brady almost gets intercepted midfield. And I don't know what it is, but the last three or four Super Bowls, maybe even the last five or six Super Bowls, there's always a circus catch made in these games in the last few minutes of the game. Yeah. That catch that Edelman made, like after the ball was almost intercepted, Edelman makes that catch... And I'll tell you one thing. Sure. It was an unbelievable sick catch, but what a fantastic call by the officials. Oh, yeah. The oh. officials came running in. Oh, yeah. It they was. communicated. Crazy. They are all... They, like, well, the one guy official, came right in, and he's like giving the... Yeah, and, and two yeah. other guys came in to confirm it. it. It was a great call by the officials on the field. Yeah. Concentration. They finally official, an official in all sport, especially football, they finally got it right. Because you guys don't get it right a lot of the time. This it's kid has no idea. Throw the flag. <laughs> no idea. Throw the flag. It's embarrassing. Embarrassing. The concentration uh, that Edelman uh, had though on that catch was was. Uh, oh. I mean, you could have given up that catch two seconds. And he's falling. And they're like they're all um, falling. It's like kind of like, oh, the ball's still alive, but here it is. Yeah. yeah. But that one Atlanta player, if you watch it, he, he uses his leg. It, it's almost like he's trying to kick the ball up to him so he can catch. Yeah. Like well, kick the ball away. No, Why you, are you, you like, trying to control the ball? On. Put the ball on the ground. That's the main job as the defender. At Listen, when, a, when when they go down, they're not thinking anything. They're all an instinct. Well, they want an interception. If he would intercept it, it's a bonehead play. And they're both go, they're both going for it. Yeah, they're both going for it. He's got it lined up. All three of them are in there, and they have a chance to get it. Of course, he's going for that. Come on, he's probably the middle child. This is why I run up the score. Uh, so, 85 to 2 with Tecmo football on a regular basis. As we, as we all know, Brady scores a touchdown to White. It's not going to. Throws it to Amendola to score the conversion. We got a tie ball game with 50 seconds left. We're going to overtime. Yeah. So, I don't even want to talk about the overtime. I, we're going to talk about the coin flip later on. I, we're going to talk about the overtime procedures later on. Wait, can we, can we just. I just want to do the one thing in there. Yeah. At the end, Ryan had 51 seconds left. Did you notice his demeanor at 51? Like, if it was reversed. One timeout or no timeouts? No timeouts. Yeah. No timeouts. Well, they, they used the time. They lost the timeout the time because they challenged on the Edelman uh, yeah, 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 catch. That's right, yeah. 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 But Ryan had 51 seconds left to go half the field, at least, you know, somewhat, to put, to put them in at least a kick. He, he was rattled, though. If that was the other way, though, if Brady had 51 oh, seconds to came go over. half. Came over. You know, the guy would have done it. Ray, Ray, Ray just said it, though. I think uh, they were rattled. Yeah. You go 28-3, to three and all of a sudden it's 28-28 against the Patriots. Did you see the nervousness when he, was, he, when he brought it up? And he's like, get down. Well, like, he, he got up and like, they like, were get down, get down. Yeah, they didn't know what to do. You know? They he weren't prepared for that. Yeah, yeah, he was. He was in panic mode. He was mode definitely panic. Anyways, I just wanted to mention that. That was crazy. So, New England Patriots win the game. 
Let's talk about the uh, exchange between uh, Goodell and Brady. Because I'm sure at one point during this game, Roger Goodell was loving this game. I bet oh, he yeah. was loving it. What did you think about that whole exchange between Goodell and Brady at the end there? You know what? If I was a New England fan, I would have thought it was the best thing ever. I mean, I was just like, whatever. Yeah. You know yeah, what, Brady was, gonna... was pretty classy. Brady was pretty classy. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah he's... No, but the silent... Like yeah. Goodell said, oh, you know, he's got a job to do, and he's got to... Uh, it, it's kind of the same in golf where you got to protect the field. He's got to protect the league. He went through what he had to do, and, yeah. and um, I, I think that handoff, what they did between Goodell and Brady... You, you know what he wasn't uh, going to was do is like, the, Ooh, you know, you're in his face. <laughs> he's he's, he's going to graciously do what Brady does. And even when he won the MVP, he's putting it on... On the other team, White. I think White should have been the one that won. Yes, yeah. Brady was that. Brady's classy. Yeah. Class. There was. Uh, I have to give a huge shout out to Carl Shepard and the officiating crew in the game. They had a fantastic game. There was only two replays needed in this game. There was the they, they kick return. Job. Edelman. Uh, they Edelman stepped out of bounds, and, and they reviewed it. that. Yeah. Now that is a very tough call because of the. Positioning of the officials, they're probably in that particular case. The officials are probably um, twenty-five to thirty yards apart. So seeing how he just barely stepped on that sideline, that's tough to that's tough to call that from from being that, that far that being that far from the runner. Yeah. So they reviewed that; it was reversed. The Edelman catch again; that was challenged. And it was upheld, so that was a you great got a, You got a challenge at that point yeah. in the game. Yeah. They made the right call, but you well, got a challenge. Yeah, you got a not? challenge. You yeah. got it, yeah. In the first quarter of the game, Matt Ryan fumbled the ball, but the head referee had whistled that his knee had already yeah. touched yeah, the game. Massively down they, down. They, never, they never reviewed that, but the television showed it three or four times. It was a great call by the yeah. head referee. And then again, we've already talked about this, but late in the game, that pass to Julio Jones where he catches the ball on the sideline. Called it. Two feet in and yeah. out. That was a great call by both the covering officials on that sideline. So, my brother loves to give the gears to the referees, but I will tell you, in this game, those referees, they won the Super Bowl themselves. I give them good game by the zebras. Four stars out of ten, and that's a good game for a ref. Yeah, you got that's a lot a of misconduct game. in minor sports, didn't you? Oh, I got the Cicerelli shirt on. Yeah, huh? yeah, that says it all. Actually, that's, that's right. That's right. That's right. A lot of misconduct. So that's our Super Bowl wrap-up, guys. Um, like we said, uh, Brady is, you know, five Super Bowl rings now, four MVPs. A lot of respect. A lot of respect. A lot of respect. Just, Let's move on. All right, he's great. One last thing Very before we move on. You won. I know it's you guys being Bill's fans in the same division. You don't want to talk about it anymore. I think uh, late in the fourth, when they did not run the football, and they, I think in their mind as an aggressive team, Atlanta, they were trying to score the touchdown, they wanted to put out of reach. I think great team slash great athletes, Nicholas, Woods, they forced the competitors into mistakes. Yeah. And you look back, and I think Atlanta will look back, learn from this, you're a young team. Uh, an interview came out a year ago with Nicholas, they were talking about 18 majors, said I didn't win 18 majors, some guys lost majors. Yeah. And... Uh, Brady and Belichick did what they had to do as Patriots did, but I think Atlanta at that time would love to have that back. Yeah, still, it's still amazing. It's still amazing. I still can't believe we're sitting here today talking that New England won the Super Bowl. Wow. I, I can't believe it. All right, so we're going to move on from our recap. We have a new segment for this week. Um, I hope you guys got this. I sent it to you earlier today. Yeah. The name of this segment is What the... <laughs> nice. Like all right. So here's my first point, all right? I thought it was really touching that they brought George Bush and his wife Barbara out to the center field for the coin toss, okay? Yeah, but maybe. this is the Super Bowl. What the <laughs> are you doing having a 93-year-old man sitting in his wheelchair to do the coin toss? The toss doesn't even get a foot in the air. Yeah. The coin's rolling all around in the player's feet. This was the craziest thing I've ever seen from uh, any sports league whatsoever. What's your thoughts on this? I, don't, I think it's a non-issue. I think respect is in this, in this area. I don't know where you're, you're going off on them for. You sound like that maybe that you're a pro-Trump or something. That you hate no. Let Barbara throw the coin. Let Barbara flip it. <laughs> I see... 
in I a big see. game like this. Ray, I got you. Yeah. The, I see the, what you're saying. The, I get it. The I coin guess. toss this, is a big it's... part to start the game. That's just that's going to decide who gets the ball, who if Defers. you decide to fur it. There's a the coin toss is a big part to kick off a football game. Yeah. And you need to have a good coin toss. Well, listen, you can't have it flip out of somebody's hand and fall around and roll it through people's <laughs> yeah, yeah, feet. Yeah, like a snake down there. I agree. It would break. Especially, jet. not only that, but remember, this is the Super Bowl. Yeah. Half the world is watching this game. Yeah, a lot of, yeah, money, but if a lot right? of money involved. But these guys work hard to get it. I you just know what, listen, it's a great different. gesture, I think. But maybe as our uh, producer here, maybe Barbara could have got the coin and. It's kind of like when you're flipping, you know, you're flipping loonies doing the loony and you flip it up and it doesn't flip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's got to flip. It's got to flip. It's a, big, it's a big part of the game. And, and it can't be rolling around in people's feet. I don't it, think it can't be it. doing it. Okay. Like, it was terrible. It was, it was, it was a bad homage decision. homage to, to the president, homage to the, the military troop. He was a World War II vet. Oh, so, come on. That's why I said I think it's great they brought him up to center field. Yeah. That was good so for them to pay him, respect. Just but it. just don't let him flip it. All right? Okay. All right, I get a little bit heated about the coin toss. Chin strap might come off soon. <laughs> All right, point number two. I'm not sure if the kick returners know this, but now in the NFL, when the ball is kicked into the end zone, they get to come out to the 25. More and more of these kick yeah, returners are getting the ball deep in the end zone, coming out of the end zone, and not even making it to the 15-yard line. So I want to know, what the... <laughs> Don't you know you can take a knee and come out to the 25-yard line? No brainer. Learn from Kaepernick. Take a damn knee. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, it's relevant. Right. Finally, it's relevant. What Finally. do you guys think of that? Well, I think they should bring him in on a training course on that. Guys, come down. You know, perfect knee. No, I, I think that's a that's a, a, a great point. I, I saw Atlanta when Atlanta, you know, they brought it out. It was like a short kick. It. But these guys, their mentality is, I'm going to take it every time. So when when they're when, you know, when you're a special team and you're, you know, you get in some of these guys' heads, they have success in practice, they have success, you know, they, they have a lot of confidence in themselves. They think they're going to take it. They're going to go, like, they want to start not at the 25, they want to start at 35, 40, right? So if you look at some of the great return men, you do two things. One, they're measuring the arc of the ball. So if it's a high arc, if it's a fair catch, it's so long, they know the guys are going to get there. Yeah. And they're... They find the ball and then they look down, see, and then they look up again. That's right. The new receivers, I don't think, are doing that as much. They just catch it and just get jittery and they go. Well, you know, I think the game's so fast, too. It's like everything's on instinct. So when it comes down, you see holes, you see holes, and it's like, I can get there. And it's the first instinct, I'm going. That's where I'm going. You're in the yeah. Super Bowl. you got to use your brain. you got to use your brain. Well, I think that falls down on the special team coach. The special team coach, if he says, if it goes in the end zone, just cut it. That's it. Your job is to, you know, and that's when you see, you know, the guy drops it or anything. Stop trying to look downfield, catch a ball, take the knee, just go. Okay. This next point I want to talk about, as a football official, whether I'm doing Pee Wee or university games, I never understand this one. But I want to know, what the... <laughs> what is with these coaches not knowing how to manage the game clock? We've already talked about Matt Ryan snapping the ball with 13 seconds left to go on the, uh, you know, on the time clock. There was mistakes made by New England at the beginning of the first half. Brady, the, the, the clock was rolling. They're down 21 now, they're, or they're down 21-3 at that point, and they're taking their time to get up to the line of scrimmage. These offensive coordinators should be telling their guys, you know, a play ahead of time, you know. No matter what happens on this next play, get up to the line of scrimmage. I find clock management by teams, whether it's Pee Wee or NFL, and all levels in between, are horrendous. And I hear players, coaches, go on about officials and, and the way we do games. I want to tell you as an official, you coaches and players don't know what the heck you're doing oh, when it comes to time one. management. That's a big one. I think that's that why uh, New England has won uh, five Super Bowls. Um, they are obviously the best prepared football team in the National Football League. Um, they're ready for every situation, um, regardless of what time it is in the game. Very well. And school, you need to be, I mean, you could tell, like we were just saying, Matty Ryan with, with no timeouts, 50 seconds, he was, he was in panic mode. I think he was in shock of the, the tie game. 
they weren't ready for for uh, quick passes to the to the sidelines to yeah. get it out of bounds to maybe kick a field goal. So, I yeah, it's a great point, Ray. These guys, uh, Belichick's the best at it, no question. I think all the coaches in the National Football League, no matter what level, yeah. Pee Wee, Adam. Uh, it's a huge part of the game. You don't want to give the ball in yesterday's situation to the greatest quarterback of all time with time left on the clock. Like okay. I don't get, I don't See, understand. I, I, it. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let off the Pee Wees and the Adams and everything because different story. Well, the, the, the you can teach them at that. But it's very complex. While they're trying to put packages together, you're like, okay, what, like, what do we, what kind of personnel do we need in here to match up with it? So you know, there's some processing. You know, the, the higher levels, the lower levels, get these kids all on the same. Like what the. Uh, on the, the kids, yeah. they, they can't, they can't, they're not going to be able to keep up with that. You know, and then they got no, the emotions. It's, it's, forget about the kids. I'm talking just coaching. Oh, the coach. You know, like, yeah. like, like when you're up, when you're up 15 points and there's three minutes left to go in the game, you don't need to throw the ball. Run the ball. Let that's the right. clock click. That, that's, right. that's what I'm talking about. It would, it would be interesting yesterday to see if New England was in the Atlanta situation and what Belichick would have done at the end of that fourth quarter right. when they should have ran it maybe. Well, I through. think they would have let him run well, through. I, I, think, yeah. I think all teams should be hiring an expert to come in and handle time management for them. Dan Quinn, check out my LinkedIn profile. Give me a shout. I'd be more than happy to come look after your time management for you. <laughs> the only, only last the Sorry, last boys. Second. You'll have to find a new host. <laughs> I think that the only last little tiny point with that is these kids have them. Like, I'm not going to bug you that you don't play, you haven't played football, but you haven't. But when you get hit and your emotions going and you can't get to the line and you're, 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 like, the nervous is going and you're, it's not the same. You're not a, you're not a professional. Yeah. You know, you're amateur. So like, yeah, so, the, so you could get all these type of people to come in, a Pee Wee and Adam, and these kids are going to be scurrying around. And you see that head? Oh, you know, they're showboating. Having a great time, but there's nothing wrong when, with working on it. There, when yeah, you, sure, when you're there, you, trust me. I'll tell you, these pee wee programs. By the time you get to playoffs, you'd be, you would be so surprised at how fine tuned some of these offenses run. Fair enough. It, Fair it enough. really is. I Fair enough. I work these games. Yeah. All right, last one. This is a little bit about the NFL's overtime procedures. Now, I don't think it would have had a huge, it wouldn't have had an impact on this game. But I want to know, what the f*** <laughs> is up with the NFL's overtime procedure? Jeff, you made a comment last night. Let's start with your thoughts on this. I, don't, I, I haven't understood it for years. Now it comes down to the Super Bowls on the line. Uh, in my mind, in my opinion, you come down to a coin toss, and, and you know whoever gets the ball first, your percentages of winning the game are obviously better than the team that loses a coin toss. So, right, right. Um, I never agreed with it. I don't think it's, I mean, you know what, kudos to, to the Patriots. They did what they had to do, no question about it. But you got the MVP in the sideline that doesn't even get to touch the football. I'll just relate to yesterday's game. I don't see any other sports that go down this way. It's kind of like going to a shootout in hockey where Chris, you score, and Ray, you don't even get a chance to tie him up. So I think they need to look at it. I think they need to figure out a way that it's fair. Um, people will say, well, if you score the touchdown, uh, your job is to stop them. Uh, yes, I get that. I, I get it. At, or if you kick the field goal, then the other team has an opportunity to go. But um, if you score a touchdown or a field goal, the other team needs to touch the ball. That's There's right. no well, question about well, it. Well, the NFL's been discussing this for the last few years, how they should handle this. And I, in my personal opinion, I think they should look at the Canadian Football League or Canadian football as far as how we run overtime procedures in Canada. And the way it works in Canada is we have what's called a shootout. So if a game is tied at the end of regulation, they will then do a coin flip on who's going to take first possession. You go to a 35-yard line, and your possession begins. And that possession goes until either you've been stopped or points have been scored. If points have been scored, the oh, second offense will then take the ball again at the 35-yard line and begin to move the ball. Their job is to either tie that score or beat that score. Right. Okay, so if the first team scores a touchdown, they got to score a touchdown. Yep. And if they tie, then both teams go back to the 35 and begin again. Mm -hmm. And it Good. continues on until one team doesn't match the other team's scoring or beats the other so team. So they always have to get a positive play to keep going. You have to get, you so have your possession. Could, no, you, you get. 
four downs. Okay. In the NFL, you get your four downs. So your your possession starts on first down, and you keep on moving until you've run out of downs or you've made a score. Okay. Yeah, I so like you, that. I think th just the way that the Both dynamics... Both offenses get the ball. The yeah. dynamics of the way football is played. I mean, other sports you play, whether it's basketball... Hockey, both teams possess, whether it's the puck, uh, the basketball. It's kind of like yesterday's game if, if, you're, if you go to extra innings in baseball and the Jays score the run in the top of the 10, well, the Yankees don't get a chance to score in the bottom. Like, yeah, yeah. it doesn't make sense, they're, 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 in my opinion. You know, it, it makes zero sense at all. I think what you need to do with the, the dynamic of football is you need to put a timed overtime. And play it out. Play it out. Yeah. So if you beat the the because yesterday, White kind of falls into the end zone. Nobody knows if it's a touchdown, and all of a sudden they call it as a touchdown. And I think everyone was kind of in shock that this game's over. Like yeah. Atlanta didn't even get a chance. It, yeah. Well, especially with with that much money, these guys work so hard. There's so much money involved, even overtime in the regular season for seeding for playoffs. It's not fair to the athletes and the organizations that are on the losing end of this. Well, see, I, 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 but I, when I heard no that, question. like that same kind of thing of where, you know, a certain amount of time and a touch a, a touchdown, but if you go a touchdown and a field goal, then that's a capital. So if you get a touchdown and the other team comes down, then it comes down to the next to the next field goal. Yeah, and then that's. I, re I read a cool thing today. Uh, that a guy was saying, uh, it's. It's tough to go to if you score a touchdown and then the other team has to score a touchdown to keep it going because now you've taken the punt out of the game, so you got four downs. Yeah. So if you if uh, New England goes down and scores, now Atlanta's got to score, well, the punt's out of the game. Now you got four downs every time. Yeah, but see, if you see, go here, to ten minutes. Here's the thing with that Canadian system that I just talked about. It's an exciting fish finish to a football game. And... The reason why you can't just put 15 minutes back on the clock is because look at the first quarter, no points were scored. Yeah. And the NFL's biggest challenge is the length of the game as it is now, right? right? Especially the Super Bowl. It was four and a half or four hours and 15 minutes last night, okay? That's a long Super Bowl yeah. to throw another 15 minute quarter on top of it. Yeah. When you go to a shootout fashion like this, and you're only starting at the 35, so you know that the field goal's in play right away, right? Yeah. It What it yep. does is it gives both offenses a chance to score, and it can be relatively a very quick overtime, or if both teams keep matching each other, it can go on for quite a while. I, I've, I've been involved in a football game where it went back and forth 13 times. Right. So yeah. it can add time on, or it can add a lot of time on, but I'll tell you what, the fans find it exciting, like the uh, shootout yeah, hockey seems, every time. It seems like every a time. good way to do it. Yeah, yeah, you could just imagine the the uh, the guys on the Atlanta sideline after yeah. they don't even get the ball. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they got they're going to change that after this. It has, change. it has yeah, to. All right, guys. So that's been our uh, newest segment. That's uh, what we call what the. <laughs> So All we right, had, we, we had to get one more in there. Right? We, we had just to get, get one, one more in there. there. All right, I should get that on my demo. All right, boys. So before we get into uh, our last topic of the night, we are going to just give a, another quick shout out to the Doyle corporate image. Okay, so for all you sports teams, companies, um, maybe organizations or charities that are looking for clothing that uh, need any type of embroidery work. Um, go see the Doyles. They've got a great artist. She'll do up your logo, however you need it done. Go see these guys that make quality products, don't you? The wicked smart. The wicked smart. Beauty, eh? Beauty. Just beauty. Beauty, beauty eh? <laughs> Thanks, boys. Darcy, Brett, thank you. You got one brother that loves chowder, and the other one loves Jada. Jada. <laughs> All right, so let's get into some odds and ends here. Um, at the end of the game last night, I did see Matty Ryan have a uh, quick interview with ESPN. Said the game was very disappointing, sucked, they missed opportunities, but they will be back. I thought he was super classy in the interview. He's just a super classy guy all around. Yeah, 100%. Okay. Yeah. Does this tarnish his MVP award from Saturday night? No. See, Come I, on, I, Jeff, you're thinking about it. No. No, I, I, if you look back, uh, I don't think uh, the game plan, he executed it well. I mean, he got yeah. sacked, but Matt Ryan didn't make very many mistakes. He did his yeah. job. Right. Um, 
again, I think it came down to the play calling of Atlanta late in the game. I don't think it was Matt Ryan's fault. I think he had a uh, he had a great year, obviously, because of all the weapons he's got around him. He's a great quarterback. He is a classy guy. And yeah, one hundred percent feel the same way. It wasn't his fault. He, no, he, he, he played he threw great. well when he had to. He even threw some like kind of crazy ones, but still, you know, hit the Julio one. They had a game plan. What did you say? He threw it twenty three times. Yeah, twenty three. Yeah. yeah, crazy. Did well. Um, we got a. We're running short for time, so I got to skip over a couple topics here. Uh, but I want to touch on Tiger Woods. We, as we talked about last week, he made that 17-hour flight to Dubai, and we talked about the possibility of him having back problems. Um, he pulled out because of uh, back spasms. What do you think of that, Jeff? Uh, I, I'm a big Tiger fan. Um, I don't like what's been going on the last few years with Tiger. He, he's been trying. He's been off 13 months to rehab his back. In that time, he's, he's hit a lot of golf balls. He's played a lot of golf with his friends. He said his game's in shape. He'll have to see what it's like in competition. And it just seems, I don't know how many years we could go back now, maybe three. Um, when he does come back and he gets in tournaments, he, when he doesn't play well, he withdraws. I mean, here's a, here, here's a great, here's a quick stat. When he won the, I think it was the 08 US Open, he won with pretty much a broken leg. Why did he play? He had the chance to win. He's not putting himself in the chance in a position to win lately, and uh, he, j he packs it in. Uh, I don't like seeing it. Uh, there's guys that play with bad elbows, bad backs. Listen, Freddie Couples has an awful back. He's been up and down for a lot of years, but yep. when his back is bad, he doesn't play. Right. I think he owes it to, I think he owes it to everyone. His kids, the, the sponsors, grind it out, pack it in after you miss the cut, shoot your 82, yep. face the cameras, face the media, it. Move on. Yeah. Move on. That's a long way to go to withdraw from a tournament. On that note, though, on the golf topic, real quick. Yeah. Hideki Matsuyama, all this Tiger talk. That was a great pronunciation. Matsuyama, six wins <laughs> worldwide in his last ten starts. It's unbelievable. These guys kind of flying to the radar. He's and, unbelievable. And, and I was, I was very surprised because he seems like he's been on tour for quite some time now. He's only like twenty-four yeah. years old, right? Yeah, stud. Stud. Like, it, it's unbelievable, this kid. Um, Golf's in a good place with the young talent, and Tigers made it that way. No question. All right, I got a quick mention I got to make here. We had one of our faithful listeners, Ian Hebelhoy, who is a uh, official with us. How are you, Hoyt? Hebelhoy. How are you, Chris? English name? He uh, <laughs> asked me to mention the Davis Cup tonight. So I had to go do a little research on the Davis Cup, and uh, we had a 17-year-old Canadian, Debit Dennis Shapalova. Shapalova? I don't know. That sounds good. That's the best I can do on that one. Okay. He was automatically uh, uh, defaulted in his match against Britain. He was having a tough match, and in frustration, he takes the ball out of his pocket and hammers it with his tennis racket. I said last week that I had no interest in tennis. I'm back. Yeah. That was the best shot to the official's eye. His name is going to get you back into the shuttle <laughs> over. You love it. The, the umpire sitting at center court took the ball directly in the face. And his, eye, the his eye was almost coming out of his face later on. Now, I have a quick story I need to tell you guys. Young McEnroe. <laughs> the evil eye. Quick, quick story. This is a little bit going back in time, Chris, and we've got to be quick on this. Chris and I once played on a ball hockey team, the Scooter Shooters. Scooter Shooters. Big champion. Big champion. We won that championship. Nice. Let me get away here. My defense partner was a short little guy. He must have stood, what, four foot one at best? Yeah, yeah. Dan, Dan Daly. Dan Daly. Dan Daly. We're playing against a team that outsized us, outweighed. I mean, we were small guys versus yeah. this other team. We were, They're our age now. Yeah. yeah. They were older guys. We yeah. were younger kids. And uh, anyways, Dan Daly starts, uh, Dan, Dan Daly starts uh, mountain with one of the guys from the other team with that, that was probably six foot guy. Yeah, yeah. And Danny's just a short kid. And Danny's got the ball in his stick, and the guy's like, half court, go ahead. Half court. Half court. He's like, go ahead, take a shot, take a shot. Danny's like, I'll hit you right in the face. I'll hit you. The guy's like, come on, take a shot. Danny, and it was one of those orange balls. He lets Curve his shot off. go. Oh, yeah. He looked at the wing. Yeah, I mean, he hit him right in the face, and I mean, timber out. It was unbelievable. The guy was in shock. Those balls aren't soft either. So no. when I saw that replay of the Davis Cup, I was thinking the of Dan Daly. That's a good that. connection. Yeah, Dan Daly. <laughs> 
Okay. The most light hit of the night. That's the one. <laughs> last, last point here, guys, that we need to talk about before heading out. Hall of Fame. So they announced the Hall of Fame, guys. Kurt Warner, Damian Tomlinson, who was part of my fantasy football team for four years. Yeah. Terrell Davis, Morton Anderson. Morton Anderson kicked for the Saints, Falcons, Giants, Chiefs, Vikings. One of the highest. He's put the most points up in the NFL. Yeah. Wow. Okay? Like Jerry Jones, which I was kind of surprised about because he's still an active owner. Um, and Jason Taylor. No Terrell Owens. What do you guys think about no Terrell Owens in the Hall of Fame? That's going to take time. He'll get there. He'll get there. Like, you know, he's such a, uh, it's almost like a Pete Rose, like, obviously not the same offense. But, you know, once you're in the bad graces of, uh, yeah. of, of the, they're, they're going to hold I, on. I think it's his, uh, his talent for sure. His talent should be, I think it's his, his sure. colorful slash vibrant personality that's kind of maybe knocked him a little. Yeah. His talent, though. His talent's there. Oh, his I mean, talent's oh, the best talent receivers ever seen. But when you look the at the drama dis- around him, the d- disasters that he brought to yeah. locker rooms, yeah. I think that's what's going to keep him out of the Hall of Fame. I don't but think it'll give him a It'll take well time. Played. It'll take time. I read something good on, on uh, Jerry Jones of how much money he's brought to the NFL. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Recently, in, in, in his tenure or so. Yeah. No, that's good. All right, guys, so um, I just, before we head out here, I want to send a quick thanks again to Curtis and the Fox and the Hound. Thanks again for hosting us. Come on. Again, to our sponsor, Moosehead. If you're going to come down to the Fox, make sure you get some Moosehead. <laughs> and again, one last quick shout out to the Doyle brothers. Make sure if you need any uh, imaging done, you uh, go see uh, Brett and Darcy. They'll take care of you. So, before we head out here, guys, I just got to tell you this. As most of you know, I've never been a big Tom Brady guy. I've never been a big Tom Brady supporter, and I've, I've always given him the gears over, over his career. But it took a seven-year-old kid this week to make me realize Tom Brady's a pretty good human being. I don't know if you saw this, but this little kid simply asked him who was his hero. Tom Brady started to answer his dad and started giving an explanation. He started tearing up, and he finished it with... My dad, did you see this? It caused, caused me to tear up as well. And I actually caught myself rooting for him in the comeback. I can't believe it. It's true. My wife's going to kill me. She doesn't know this. But I caught myself rooting for uh, Brady as he was coming back. So congrats to the New England Patriots. And all you pain in the ass New England fans that are going to be texting me and bragging for the next year. But as of tonight, the New England Patriots are tied with Buffalo for first place. Enjoy the week, guys. Enjoy the week.